Across the country, from Florida to Maryland to Colorado, a CBS News investigation exposing hundreds of students handcuffed in hallways. Now tonight, the case is here in Southern California and the disturbing data on which children are most likely to see police. You would just do a kid like that is very disturbing. Are you worried for other children? Yes, I think it's a, a big problem. In one school year, police arrested hundreds of elementary and middle school students in California, and that's far less than the national average. But the state is above average when it comes to the chances of police arresting black and Hispanic students, as well as students with disabilities. KCAL 9 senior reporter Ross Palumbo has the disturbing details in a story you'll only see here. Astonishing video. Agonizing parents. My son was screaming. You could hear the agony and the pain from the video. <laughs> Attorneys calling for action. They are most definitely targeted. A sheriff defending his deputies. Racist cops and everything else. It is complete BS. And numbers now revealing <laughs> how common handcuffs are in California's hallways. It's a bigger problem than just this single video. It's most definitely a crisis. <laughs> The crisis for this 11-year-old black student with disabilities began one day before Riverside County deputies came to his classroom at Landmark Middle School. The report saying they were there to investigate allegations of him throwing a rock at a male and then two rocks at a female school staffer. One of them hit her hand and she was not injured. Let's go. The next day, the child, we'll call CB, refuses to go to the principal's office for questioning. You're going to go to the office no matter what. And 28 seconds later, a struggle begins. Snatched him up out of his desk. <laughs> they slammed his head to the floor. Officer, at least three times his size, pressed his neck down with uh, the officer's knee on his neck and back. One officer was twisting his arms. Deputies then slap cuffs on those arms. No. And the struggle continues for a full six no, no. minutes. Stop kicking. More. Yes. It's hard to watch that here and know he was in pain. To just think that this wasn't no violent crime that he was involved in. Deputies, in fact, reported that they handcuffed and detained his son after CB kicked one and then attempted to kick another. That's uh, why they handcuffed him. Was he a threat? No. Was he kicking officers? No. Should they have handcuffed him? No, they shouldn't have handcuffed him. Uh, he's only 70 pounds. Uh, any trained police officer, only one of them, should be able to handle a 70 pound kid. Does any child that small need to be handcuffed? Yes. Sheriff Chad Bianco says no one can fairly assess that need with only one piece of video, one snapshot, one perspective. And you see at one point this deputy puts his knee on his back. Mm -hmm. But he says he's seen enough to know what happened here. Out. On that video, I saw nothing that would cause me as as the sheriff or the leader of, of, of deputies that were that could have been handling that that would have caused me an issue and said, oh my gosh, what are you doing? They and other agencies are, of course, doing policing across the entire Southland. Our CBS News analysis of the most current U.S. Department of Education data shows that during the 2017-18 school year, schools sent students to police 5,913 times and arrested 318 children in grades 8 and below. The vast majority of those were not here in the city's core, where police arrested 119 students at LAUSD schools, but in the surrounding suburbs, where police arrested even more 199 students. In fact, the schools that tied with the highest number of arrests, 12 on each of their campuses, were suburban Marco Forster Middle in San Juan Capistrano, McFadden Intermediate in Santa Ana, and La Mesa Junior High in Santa Clarita.
Closer to this case here in Riverside County, police arrested nine students and were called in a total of 1747 times. And more specifically here at Landmark Middle School, where this case actually happened, police were involved 208 times. 208 times that deputies were called in, 208. Does that number seem like a lot? Anytime that, that that's a response, we, we need to address it. We need to look into why. Is there a problem at that school? No. Superintendent Martin Rex Kedziora refuses to speak about this problem. <laughs> caught on camera at his school. You know, because there's litigation that we're involved in. The family has filed suit against him and the district, alleging excessive force, battery, assault, and negligence, saying the police presence there has a disproportionate impact on students with disabilities and black students. He's a African-American disabled student who has to navigate the world and school in that way. Was that a factor? Most definitely. I mean, the statistics show that he's at much greater risk of being a recipient of this kind of harsh discipline because of those factors. Nationally, the data does show police are nearly three and a half times more likely to arrest black children, one and a half times more likely to arrest Hispanic students, and more than three times as likely to arrest students with disabilities. In California, most of those odds are even higher. Police are four times more likely to arrest black students, nearly two times more likely to arrest Hispanic students and more than three times as likely to arrest kids with disabilities. There is a, a racist tinge to how these policies are implemented against students. And for a child that is both black and disabled like CB, Rivera claims police are 11 times more likely to make an arrest. I think the statistics bear out that black and brown students are disproportionately affected by these kinds of discipline policies. Is it racism? We think it is. Are your deputies racist? Absolutely, unequivocally, no. 11 times and more likely, are, do you think are, that's that possible? Is a, that is a disingenuous attorney that has done everything she possibly could to find a statistic that could make everyone say, oh my gosh, the racist cops. Oh my gosh, the racist cops. It's a defensive response, I think, to you know, not want to face the, the facts and really answer up to what's really happening. That sheriff had just watched the video that yeah. you watched. Yeah, he, 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 should, didn't he should be fired. He should be removed from office. Does that anger you? Yes, he could try to explain it off any way that he want to, but the facts is still going to be the facts. <laughs> The indisputable fact is CB was restrained and detained. And no matter what the reasons or the chances or the motivations were, the family believes their son should never have had to learn about these handcuffs in these hallways. I get very angry. You think it changed him? Oh yeah, it definitely changed him. Forever? Yeah, it's that kind of emotional trauma is going to stick with him for the rest of his life. The Ross also tells us that the 2019 case at Landmark Middle School is still being litigated. The district says that 11 year old was never actually charged or arrested. The district says they're consistently working to improve all the interactions with authorities and say there was not a single arrest or police referral in the district in the 2021 school year and no arrests so far this year.